Welcome again to the Blue Sky Performance YouTube channel. New week, new project. It's not so new to us, but it's Joe's 68 Firebird. We've been working on this car for many years. Great customer. Um, car came to us probably five years ago. Pretty stock, resto mod, small things like a five speed, uh, disc brake rear. Stock interior, stock engine, stock appearing engine bay carbureted, nothing, nothing too crazy. Um, first thing we did was the engine bay. We fabricated the closeout panels, fabricated a bolt-on firewall closeout panel. Didn't want to, didn't want to intrude into the car and do a lot of welding on the firewall. Um, so we did a bolt-on uh, firewall treatment. After a couple years of that setup, uh, he wanted new interior, so we had Gillen Interiors do a beautiful light gray interior, all leather, um, real custom, but kind of not. This car is very classy. Uh, that's always been the theme of the car is keep it classy. Joe loves his shiny stuff, so any exterior stuff is as shiny as it can get. Chrome valve covers from Ogden Chrome. You know, Chrome the Fessler. Uh, fender braces, it's running on uh, Holly, the, the Blueprint LS3. Um, let me rewind a little bit. The 455 a few years ago sprung a leak uh, in the head gaskets. It always ran a little hot, so we did an LS swap with the Blueprint um, LS376, uh, which makes about 460 to the tire, 540 at the crank, uh, 528, uh, somewhere around there. Um, but the car runs so much better now. Um, much more modern feeling car with an LS. Uh, the Holly port fuel injection, you get in it, you start it, fine. We can put inputs for when the air conditioning on it pulls the idle up just a little bit, um, just to get a little bit better performance out of the air conditioning um, at idle and traffic, stuff like that. So you're probably thinking, well, how can this car get any, any better? Um, has a pretty stock suspension, a few upgrades here that I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, however, Joe wanted a little bit better performance out of the car, so our, our no-brainer go-to was the Roadster Shop spec chassis. So this is a full chassis that bolts into the first-gen Camaros. Um, they do make them for a number of other vehicles, uh, second-gen Camaros and Firebirds, uh, Mustangs, um, that is a full chassis that bolts into the car. This doesn't require any cutting of the floor pans, no welding, nothing. All you gotta do is add a couple body mounts um, to the upper frame rail section, add a bracket that bolts in where the original leaf spring bolted in, and now you have a bolt-in suspension, or bolt-in chassis that's um, all link suspension, um, this isn't a Mustang II front suspension. This is Roadster Shop's own engineered front uh, IFS for the spec line. Um, it is shared throughout their whole spec line. So, you, you know, for instance, we've done a 62 Impala. Um, also has a spec chassis. Boom, same suspension. Um, rack and pinion from a uh, late model Mustang. Big fat sway bar. Coilovers. Super nice kit. Um, you know, if, if the budget allows, Roadster Shop chassis is the way to go. If the budget allows it and, and you're, you're willing to, to put in your investment into a chassis like this, say, say no more. Um, another nice part about this chassis is when the engine's in, headers are in, your exhaust can actually route up nice and tight. Um, in another video we put together, it's either out already or going to be out already. Uh, I did a little bit of a install video on one of our exhausts that we fabricated here and um, we like them to tuck nice and tight to the body. You don't want them hanging down like a, like a pig's belly. We want them tight, tucked nice. So Roadster Shop has developed this chassis to allow a full three inch exhaust to sit nice and high um, so you don't have to have any worries about scraping the exhaust, you know, come into a car show and, <laughs> and it's nothing worse. So um, another, it's, a, it's another little caveat to the chassis is that they've um, engineered that type of uh, flexibility for the, the exhaust to be built in a nice tidy package. So bare brakes, 13 inch in the front on this particular car, you can get them with 14s. Uh, 11 inch brakes in the back, 
e-brake in the hat. Again, four piston in the rear as well. It's a nine inch rear. You can throw all the power you want at it. It's gonna handle it, no problem. Um, so, and we'll show you what we're gonna be replacing. <clears throat> As you can see, Matt did pan over to the wheels and tires on this car. Um, they fit the car perfectly. <clears throat> Excuse me. 17 inch eights and nines, um, US mag bandit style wheels. Uh, it, it looks like a Pontiac Rally 2, but in a little bit larger size. And then we doubled it with the Diamondback red line tires. Um, it, the car always had red line tires, so we've always kept it looking like that. Uh, this time around, we're going to be installing some forge lines. Um, don't have it off the top of my head on what model it is, but they also make a wheel that looks like the Pontiac Rally 2, except it's a three-piece forged forge line wheel. And we will also be keeping red line tires on those as well. So coming over here to show you what your typical street F-body cruiser style F-body has. Stock lowers, lowering springs aftermarket sway bar, uh, has Hotchkiss tubular uppers, which is a great upgrade for a stock setup. Um, it gives you a, a big bang for your buck. Um, this car has the right stuff, brakes, um, big brake kit with the PBR caliper 13 inch rotor with a two piston PBR. Very typical of what you'd see in a 94 to 04 Cobra. Um, again, stock subframe, nothing crazy. Subframe connectors, which help your that torsional rigidity. Um, two and a half inch exhaust. Leaf springs in the rear. Probably could benefit from Caltrax, but those days are in Joe's past, so we, we don't have to uh, visit, visit that. Um, disc brake in the rear. Typical of what you'd see in a third gen Camaro Firebird. Um, Stock fuel tank, we don't need to get a new custom tank for the spec chassis, spec chassis bolts in, um, in place without having to modify anything like that. So, this is Joe's 68 Firebird. It's a super cool car. Um, Joe's allowed us to really flex our, our creative muscles on this car and we're super excited to upgrade it and give it the chassis that it really deserves. So. Um, We'll, we'll keep you guys posted with uh, the disassembly of the car and then the installation of that spec chassis. So stay tuned.
Well, she's torn apart now. Matt made quick work of taking it apart. About a day and a half worth of work. Um, we worked on it, so everything unplugged, no cut wires, nothing. When we build these cars, we make sure that they're serviceable because we know that whether it's us or not, we want the next guy to have a good time taking it apart, not having to undo wires by cutting them with you know solid terminals. We, we like to put weather pack connectors. So the car came apart spectacularly. Um, you can see the subframes out, motor and trans land here, the rear, and we have the chassis ready to go under. Um, before we swap the engine and transmission over, we will be cleaning up the transmission. It's a little dirty. Uh, Joe does take an extremely good, good job of uh, keeping the car, his car clean, but the transmission is a very hard area to get, uh, you know, in with rags and cleaning stuff. So we'll clean the transmission up for him, make it look pretty before it goes into the car. But we'll do the swap, and uh, you can see um, there's some guts hanging down below, but. Matt uh, did a great job of marking everything. Um, you know, essentially all nice weather pack connection, connections so that the cars come apart, real simple. Um, you can see under here with everything out, the car is super clean. Um, no rust repair at all needed. Uh, quite frankly, all we're gonna be able to do is come under here with some, some Windex and wipe it down and clean it up before we put that chassis up into it. Um, We'll be redoing the fuel lines. Um, Matt's going to pull those back. They're, they're siphoning out the fuel if we drop them down. Um, we can remove the factory front to rear uh, brake line because the Roadster shop, actually, you can order these chassis with a CNC bent brake line so it, it tucks it up nice and tight. You know, it's like a $1,200 option. And it's well worth it because you just you, you can't replicate that for 1200 bucks any other way so um, next step is to get the drivetrain moved over get the chassis underneath it set the bracket into place for the frame rail and uh, see how she fits it's the morning of day four and we have it on the chassis. It's, it's mocked up in place. Um, we ran into a couple snafus. I have to go back on a couple of my words, which I'll explain in a few minutes. Um, but it's down, motor and trans is in, need a few adjustments. So we'll get up in the air and show you uh, the chassis bolted up. So there she is, here's the underside of the Roadster Shop spec chassis. We got the motor and trans in. Um, we hit a small snafu in the trans tunnel. Um, cars are gonna have different variables, different things here and there. It's not gonna be a perfect install every time. Um, so you're gonna run into things. It's something we do every day as car builders. We, you know, have to kind of, uh, you know, an engineer on the fly. So you can see um, up in here, there's a small little issue with the, trans, the shifter. So we'll just have to open up the shifter hole. It's, it was a pretty small hole from, from when it was, from what it was. So we'll just open that up a little bit just so we can move the shifter around. Uh, the transmission does get shimmed up about an inch. So these headers will tuck up a little higher. The transmission won't hang as low. Um, but you can see it fits unbelievably well. I mean, there's air everywhere. The floor pans don't contact the chassis anywhere. Super, super nice. Um, you know, before we had the brake lines that ran down, kind of haggard looking here now. They're nice and tucked up into the chassis uh, with those CNC brake lines like I had mentioned. Um, 
nine inch rear fits beautiful. Now, earlier on in the video, I did mention that you can utilize the stock tank or stock style tank. We had a tank with the notched corners, which is an aftermarket um, solution from Tanks Inc. that allows for tailpipe clearance around the tank. However, this does not fit with the spec chassis, so you'll have to sort um, or, or uh, source uh, the tank from the Roadster shop. Um, it's kind of a catch-22. You have a really nice tank when you go with the one from Roadster Shop. It's fully stainless steel, all TIG welded, so it's a piece of art in itself. So you are having to get a nice new expensive tank. However, you're gonna have a really nice piece that's gonna be kind of like the crown jewel back here when you look under the car. Um, but uh, we sourced this car with the narrowed axle, which is three inches shorter on both sides. Um, in the meantime, we have three inch spacers just to, to get the wheels um, on the car and sitting uh, where, where they were. These will be going up for sale because we are going to be getting a set of Forge Line JO3Cs. I did my research since the last time we spoke earlier on in this video. Um, it'll be the Forge Line JO3C, uh, but an 18 by 9 in the back. Um, polished, you know, we're going to keep the wheel looking the same, get the red line tire, but it'll be an 18 inch wheel. Um, so overall, this went extremely smooth um, for what we're doing here. A lot of cars, it, it could be, um, a lot of surprises could come up if, if you don't have the right car to do this. Um, for instance, if you're not familiar with the car and you go out and buy it, I want to put it on a spec chassis and you take it apart and you're like, oh boy, we need hundreds and hundreds of hours of rust repair before we can even get to the point of installing the spec chassis. However, this car is the perfect candidate for it because we knew it top to bottom. So the surprises really didn't come up other than the fuel tank and oh, also um, we had the Holly 302-1 oil pan. Um, it's somewhere around here, but, and we found out that we needed the 302-2 oil pan. Um, the 302-1 just kind of hangs a little low and we ended up contacting the steering rack. So uh, we had to get a different pan. Um, so again, that's the 302-2. That's the pan that the Roadster Shop engineered this chassis to work with with an LS. Um, so overall, um, it, it's for us, it's a pretty easy job. You could do this um, in your garage at home. If you have a lift, obviously that's gonna make your life a lot easier. I'm sure there's ways to do it without a lift. However, we need a lift. Um, the Roadster Shop, again, I'm, I'm gonna sound like a Roadster Shop fanboy, but their product is incredible. For them to make a full chassis that bolts into the car is really, it's something special. So um, that about wraps it up for this video. Um, the next video that will come out will be buttoning up, but buttoning up everything. Sorry, it's still pretty early here, so I'm just waking up. Um, but we'll be getting everything buttoned up, do a little bit more detailing, cleaned. We'll get this oil pan painted um, and installed uh, for, for final assembly. We'll adjust it, we'll, you know. We'll, we'll, we'll save you guys from the boring back and forths of, of finishing up some, some of those trimming issues. And um, the next time you see it, the chassis will be in for good. And we'll, we'll get into doing exhaust. I'll do a video on measuring for wheels and tires so that you can see what it goes into ordering a set of high-end wheels and tires because you don't want to mess it up. I did mess up a set this summer. It wasn't cheap to fix up that mess up. So I will show you guys what to do to avoid that, uh, that, that, that cost you have to do when you have to send them back to Forge Line and have them give us new barrels. So stay tuned. Hope you enjoyed this, uh, this video and uh, we look forward to uh, episode two.